Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime. And just like last time, I've been asked to use the equation of the line to complete the table of points. So you might be thinking, Kate, why are you giving me the same problem again? The <laughs> reason why I'm doing it this time is because when you guys see a fraction, you lose your minds and you panic. But if you were doing anything like this on the GED, um, when we talk about um, equations, algebra, graphing lines, we always get our trusty TI 30 excess calculator. So I just want to kind of like walk you through that fear of fractions that you have and show you that it's not as bad as it looks because you can do the work in your TI. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so again, we can see here, let me grab up my pen, that we have an equation. Now they tell us it's an equation of a line, but you don't even need to understand what that means in order to work the algebra here. Because even though this problem looks complicated, all it does is test a very, very simple basic algebra skill known as substitution. Substitution is the ability to trade out one thing for something else that's equivalent. Substitution, the ability to trade out one thing for something that's equivalent. And in algebra, what do we trade out? We trade out those variables. We trade out variables for equivalent values all the time. Let me show you what I mean. And erase this marking here. Take a look at the table that I have here. This table has a bunch of x values. It's titled x, so that negative 6 is a possible x value. So is that negative 3, so is that 0, so is that 3, and so is that 6. All they're asking you to do is put in these different values of x and see what happens to y. What happens to y when x is negative 6? What happens to y when x is negative 3? And so on and so forth. So let's give it a try. I'm going to leave the yy because that's the thing I don't know. In algebra, we use letters for mysteries. Uh, I leave my equal signs where my equal signs are, and I leave numbers, so my two-thirds is going to remain. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute. I'm going to substitute for x the value that they told me I should make x. The first time they told me I should make x be negative 6. So now, careful. If you just write negative 6 like this, I'm going to think you mean two-thirds minus 6. But with these two things shoved together like this, we know when a number and a letter are shoved together in math class, they're multiplying. So super important that you put the negative 6 in parentheses to tell yourself, your calculator, and anyone who's reading your work that that 2 thirds is multiplying by negative 6. And now, of course, I won't change my minus from right up here, and I won't change any numbers. So my new equation, now that I substituted negative 6 for x, is y equals 2 thirds times negative 6 minus 1. Now, I got super great news. Do you see how this entire right-hand side has no letters left? There's no variables in it. It's all numbers and operations, like minus, add, um, multiply. Um, the things we do in math are operations. So we've got no variables, just numbers and operations. That means this entire thing is an expression that we can simplify. This entire right-hand side of the equation could be typed into my TI 30 excess. You can type two thirds by typing two and then the N over D button, that's the fraction button, then thirds. Now be super duper careful, depending what mode you're in, you might have your cursor blinking in the bottom of your fraction right now. So make sure you right arrow out of the fraction by pressing the arrow button and then type parentheses negative six, super important those negative, that negative six is in parentheses or your calculator might try to minus. Another thing you're gonna notice is that the negative button looks like this. It's at the bottom of your screen. It looks like a negative in parentheses. And then from that, we're gonna minus one. If you were to type all that into your calculator, you would get, sorry, I'm doing it in my head, not in my calculator, negative five. Now you might be thinking, Kate, I don't wanna do it in a calculator. I wanna do it in my head. Well, I know that it's super easy to reduce fractions. When I'm multiplying, I can do what's known as cross-reducing. So I do, that turns into a two, that turns into a one, and two times negative two is negative four, and negative four minus one is negative five. So, it doesn't matter which way you do this with your calculator or doing all the fractions and the negatives in your head, you're still going to find out that when x is negative 6, y becomes negative 5. Okay, 
And now you might think, well, what about all those other numbers, Kate? Well, you just plug all those numbers in one at a time and see what happens to Y then. Now I'm going to tell you, I actually don't like using a calculator because it's easier to do fractions by hand. I know you don't believe me. But I swear, mm, fractions are beautiful to multiply and divide with. And so that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do them by hand. And you feel free to pause me, pick up your TI, and see if you can do these calculations in your TI and get the same answers. So I plugged in negative 3 for x this time. Again, my equation looks exactly the same, except I know that I'm multiplying by negative 3. Now, when I'm multiplying fractions, I like to cross-reduce. So that reduces to 1, and I get 2 times negative 1. I get negative 2 minus 1. I get negative 3. And you should get negative 3, too, if you just type that entire thing into your calculator. If you type 2, n over d, 3 times, oh, arrow out of your fraction, times negative 3 minus 1. Uh, then you would get the exact same answer I got. But I did get negative 3. If you're getting an error message, it's probably because you typed a minus sign when you should have typed a negative or vice versa. The TI, even though they look the same to us, has two different buttons, one for when you're minusing and one for when you're doing a negative number. So we're just going to keep going like that, plugging in these X's and seeing what happens to Y. So I will plug in now a 0. What would happen to Y if X became a 0? So 0 times anything is just 0. And if you take 1 away from nothing, you're in the hole. You are at negative 1. And a few more, and then we'll be done. Could they have something like this on the GED? They sure could. I've seen uh, very similar type things um, on GED practice and from the GED website. So, okay, so what happens if I make X into 3? What will happen now? Well, 3 on the top and 3 in the bottom will cancel. Again, plug it into your TI if you struggle with fractions. But I do get just 2 from that. And if I take 1 away from 2, I get 1. And one more. Sorry, I should have finished my problem. Y equals 1. And you'll see the lazy mathematician in me popping up when I do something repeatedly. I tend to skip steps. Uh, but let's plug in now 6. So if I take 2 thirds of 6... Uh, that'll give me 4. So y is equal to 4 minus 1. And of course, 4 minus 1 is just 3. So I get 3. So I completed the table of points. I filled it in. I'm done. Um, what do I get? All those answers on the right-hand side. Uh, if you have any questions about this or any other GED topic, be sure to drop it in the comments, and I'll do my very best to answer it.